mention the name Pangram to anyone with even a passing knowledge of animacy, and you could find yourself in for a very long discussion. Publicly reviled, but privately lauded as a hero and genius, Pangram's history is at turns revolutionary, horrific, and mysterious. Pangram was fascinated, some might say obsessed, with the concept of animacy. It consumed his life as he dedicated everything to understand it. He would frequently travel to Air Glanfath and the Deerwood to visit the Ingwithan ruins. There, he would take notes and make sketches, bringing anything back with him that he could to help him unlock the mysteries. After years of study, Pangram had reached a point where he could no longer conduct research on his own, and he took on an assistant, Heleg of Thine. Soon, Heleg was making trips to Air Glanfath and Pangram's stead, gathering knowledge while Pangram stayed behind to experiment. This partnership quickly bore fruit, and Pangram made a breakthrough, one that would irrevocably change his life and the general attitude about animacy forever. While the specifics of his experimentation will never truly be known, the rumors and stories that still circulate tell that he has sent out inquiries, asking for live subjects for help with a dangerous experiment that might change your life, or might end it. Those who are already dying were especially encouraged to apply. Response was overwhelming and Pangram had his pick of numerous willing bodies. That is when he had his breakthrough. He discovered a way to fix a soul, anchoring it to its body so it couldn't leave at death. He had discovered eternal life. His research and life's work had resulted in the greatest single discovery that Animancy could hope for. His findings were published and quickly spread throughout Valia and beyond. While some groups, the Wodokan Church, for example, decried his work as nothing more than blasphemy and hearsay, many put it to practice. Everyone wanted the chance at immortality. But everything comes with a cost. It quickly became apparent that simply restraining the soul while keeping the person technically alive was doing nothing for the body, which continued to decay de-evolving and warping the soul now trapped inside it. The creatures it created were dangerous, carnivorous beasts that killed brutally and indiscriminately. The backlash was ruthless. The practice of Pangram's discoveries was outlawed. His works were collected and burned. He and Helig were branded heretics and hunted, chased from town to town until Pangram simply vanished. Helig was tracked down, captured, and brought to trial for the atrocities committed against Valia and its people. The trial was barely more than a formality to bring charges against him, as everyone knew what hand he had played in the disaster. He was sent to prison for years, but eventually released once public outrage died down. Not long after his parole, he disappeared as well. Occasionally, Talk surfaces that a copy of Pangram's theorems has been found, untouched by the purging flames that destroyed his brothers. These rumors seldom end up being more than that. Many groups and wealthy individuals have formed, sending out a call to anyone who will listen. Find us a copy of the theorems. They offer gold, jewels, status anything they can to entice adventurers to help them achieve their goals. For there are those who would give anything for a chance at immortality, even become a monster. Animancy is a science both respected and reviled, sometimes by the same person. For all the research done on the topic, still know so little. Control over life itself. Something Animancers have been working towards for hundreds of years. 
There are no real records of how the practice of animacy was first discovered. But once the spark of knowledge ignited, there was no stopping its inevitable discoveries. In 2260 AI, animancers, as a result of their extensive research, successfully contained and transferred a soul. The subject of the experiment, whose name is unknown, was young and wealthy, but infirm. The idea was to move his soul from the dying body and into that of a recently deceased man who had suffered an accident. The new body, bearing only slight decay, would house the soul, giving the man a much better life. The outcome of this experiment resulted in the condemnation and outlaw of animancy in the Adiran region. Again, while we have no true records of what happened, as they were all destroyed after animancy was outlawed, a journal was discovered, a makeshift confession by one of the participants. Excerpts from that journal follow. 2260 AI Funk Prima, 16. It is done. And the gods forgive us for our arrogance. I'm not sure what I was expecting. Certainly not that. But what did any of us expect? Still, behind the revulsion, there is a sense of pride. Something I can't deny. All the research, the studying, everything we worked for. We thought we'd change the world. How it's changed. All was in place. The twisted form lying on the table next to its new vessel. The equipment had been prepared. The tinctures and potions all carefully crafted. Every detail painstakingly organized to ensure success, we most assuredly succeeded. The procedure went exactly as it should. The soul, extracted from the old body, held, bound in place to prevent it from moving on. Then the next step, transfer to the fresh vessel. Beautiful and terrifying. I listened as they spoke the words of binding. I watched the soul move. Not the soul itself, of course, but the vapor we used to detect it as it lowered into the vessel. A gentle luminescence covered the body and then... Nothing. Silence darkness. I held my breath, afraid that even the slightest disturbance would destroy all of our hard work. Then, motion. Then, dear gods, then, blood. How did I survive? I do not know. The vessel rose from the slab and the room breathed. Every person crowded around the tables exhaled. Some cheered. We had made life from death. We had become eternal. The body closed its eyes and tilted its head, looking for all purposes to be listening or something or do it. Then its eyes popped open and it moved. Its lips peeled back from its teeth in a horrible expression of fury. It fell on the nearest man, tearing his throat, knocking him to the ground. Then the room erupted into screams, shouts, and a flurry of bodies running, pushing doing everything in their power to get away from the creatures sitting on their colleague. But right before that happened, in the split second before the chaos, when there was nothing in the air but a stunned, 
terrified silence. I heard it. Sitting there on his chest, face at his neck. And it was feasting.